Hey there, hi, hello, how are ya? Um, we are now playing Gary's Mod. Been quite a while since I uploaded, uh... But yes, this is yet another Scapegrace SNPC's volume video. And oh no no no, I'm not showing you guys the spawn menu in this video. It's, uh, it's full of volume 10 secret content. But this is the volume 8 video. Why is it doing this? All right. Well, if you've watched literally any other Scapegrace SMPC's video on my channel, you should know what to expect. So you know what? Let's get right into it. Volume 10 ads. Three, six, nine new NPCs. This one's one of the better ones, in my opinion. I feel like Volume 8 is a bit underrated. But yeah, let's get started. So first up, we got Ludolo uh, by Void. So he's another boss suggestion. Once spawned, it spawns two of its minions in. I pronounce that as Descon Hasido. I don't know if that's correct. And Terra Kandon, while it just spectates. Ludolo has... That is incorrect. When you kill all of its minions, it says not too bad, but now you have to face me, and then it starts its main fight. It kills on touch. It spawns two random scapegraces. When you defeat those two, Ludolo just kills you. You can't evade it, but... It it just kills you. But instead of killing you, it has a 2% chance to reload your game. When you die, Ludolo spawns early, then he will despawn. I'm not sure if that description is perfectly accurate, because I just took that from the suggestion, but Ludolo has been tweaked slightly, and I will be spawning him with Ent Create. I'll just switch to something non-spoiler. I can't really click on that. If we switch to DRG base, you can see the new icons over there that I teased. Wait, I'm a lamp. Ent underscore create, NPC underscore DRG underscore Ludolo. All right. So that happens. And basically, he uh, he greets you, and then you have to fight his minions. Oh, shit. So basically, Descon summons in these uh, fake, uh, weird SMPC clones that run around and do absolutely nothing. He does uh, nothing else. Ah, uh, you fell for it. I'm not sure what the point of that is. And he summons in a bunch of these. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 that. All right, and you have to kill Duskon to proceed. Uh, um, yeah, he just, just kills you. And that's kind of all he does, really. So let's kill him. Well, I should just be taking my minigun because this is kind of yeah. Get out of here. Okay, I guess you found out. And then you are presented with uh, this very cool-looking house, but don't be fooled. Terra Kandon lies in this house, and here he comes. So that's this one's mechanic. So Terra Kandon has a thousand HP, and he's kind of a generic chaser. And, uh, that's, uh, that's all he does. He can kill you if I were not to be using my admin gun. Oh, hey, there's another fake over here. How are you still talking to me? You're dead. And once we kill him, this will kickstart the main fight with Ludolo. Guess I could check out the code first to see just how he works. Okay, so Ludolo himself is a bit interesting. If I just re respawn Terra Cannon. Alright, so basically, uh, after I got rudely interrupted, this guy, he has 3,500 HP and you have 90 seconds to kill him. He chases you, he ow, uh, <laughs> and basically, after 90 seconds, he's gonna summon in two random scapegraces NPCs. So, uh, that's fun. And then, if, uh, there's still another 90 seconds left on the timer, um, he will, he has a 1 in 100 chance to reload your game or kill you, and then he'll just summon in Verlies. If you manage to kill him in time, but if you wait for three minutes, then uh, you will actually see the rest of the NPC, which I'll actually just spawn right now. So if you don't kill Ludolo in time, he summons in Verlies, who is uh, really fast. Uh, he has 500 HP, and I'm not sure what he does except for being fast. Oh, wait, okay. Well, he can't kill me instantly, so I guess it's fine. But yeah, homie, uh, he, he's ooming. Ooh. Let me actually see what this guy does. So he has 500 HP, and if you don't kill him in uh, a minute, then he will respawn Des Conhecido and uh, Terra Kandon. But if you do manage to kill him, then he's gonna summon in the last phase of this boss fight, Treble. So I'm gonna do exactly that. Uh, hey there, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna need you to stop moving there for a second. Uh, okay. So I got him to summon in Treble, who is a bit interesting. He is the last uh, phase of the Ludolo suggestion. Okay, so this guy basically, um, he f he's another boss. If you don't kill him in 200 seconds, then he's gonna summon in two random scapegrace bosses. And that's kind of what he does. He's, uh, he's the last phase of Ludolo. And if you kill him, then he's gonna have a second secret phase. Ooh. And this is the absolute last phase of Ludolo. And this is just a really beefed up version of Trevel. Uh, he summons in every boss, and much more often. And, uh, we're just gonna get rid of him. Oh, fuck. God damn it, I didn't kill him in time. Ah! Okay, uh, let's try that again. So, Treble spawns, you kill him. And then this guy spawns, and you kill him. 
and he remains there forever. The bosses won't spawn, but this, uh, this is, this is permanent, uh, <laughs> and this never ends. It's like this forever, so, uh, this is, a uh, pretty, pretty spooky. The only way to stop it is to clean up everything, and that's the loot love suggestion. All right, then we have four lat. He will give you 20 seconds to run away or hide. After the 20 seconds are up, he will spawn in and turn the fog pitch black. If he can't find you, he will start summoning in Preacher that can detect you globally and deal 20, 10 to 20 damage a tick. If he is able to find you on his own, he will spam and chat, your time is up, and he'll start moving super fast. Uh, that amount of speed to be exact. If you get killed by him, he will move faster, capping at 10 kills. Once he reaches half health, he can spawn in his other minions. He will start summoning in red po portals or spawn in cultists. Cultists can detect you globally, similar to Preacher. So, uh, pretty interesting. Or let- Fuck. God damn it. Ah. Fat fingering these keys. Who needs backslash, anyways? Alright, so, uh, he gives you 20 seconds. You can just kill him in this time. But you can also uh, choose to uh, back away. That's kind of what this guy does. He's another hide and seek NPC. He still have a completely different design on release. We had to change it because it was kind of bad. All right, and then uh, he he becomes the average hide and seek NPC, who's also killable. This is the first killable hide and seek NPC, and he will look for you. You can tell where he is from the music, and uh, he has a red light. But if I let him get too close, then uh, he will say that, and he will speed up. You can see him speed up slightly. <laughs> and he would actually be able to kill me and boost his speed if I weren't to be holding this gun. And I could just, uh... Where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he? I lost him. Let's just do that. Alright, so uh, you could just kill him and he summons in this radio. I'm not sure if this radio is available, it's, it's not. And it endlessly uh, says a Morse code message, and I forgot what it says. Uh, it's probably not that important. But if he can't find you for an extended period of time, he will summon in his minions. The first one listed is Preacher. And Preacher is slow, but is omniscient. And uh, he does around 10 damage a tick. Oh, wow. So he kills you pretty fast. And Preacher is killable. One. Dead. And then he summons an Insanity, who's really fast, and he has a shit ton of HP. Actually, this isn't that fast, but as compared to the speed of everything else as part of this NPC, I guess it is kind of fast. God damn it. I forgot he has collision groups. Ah. Die. And then Cultist. Uh, so those portals eventually shit out Cultist. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all he does. He insta-kills you and he has 300 HP and he's not that fast. And uh, there you go, that's uh, that's four left. Hide and seek NPC, but he's killable and he summons in a bunch of minions. Not sure how he didn't see me there. His sight range isn't that big, I guess. Hey there. Solar. Solar can't move. This SMPC makes the fog orange and can summon ember every 20 seconds. This SMPC can also summon two types of minions, spawning one every two minutes. There will be four orbs in random parts of the map. Each have 1,600 HP. If you destroy one, I'll say orb destroyed in chat. And you can also summon in a bunch of minions. That description is a bit inaccurate. I'll just uh, describe it myself. I almost failed to spawn many there for a second. All right. So, Dolar, pretty big. He's the boss. And uh, I never actually implemented that ember mechanic because in testing it was really overpowered, but uh, ah! he does that when you got too close to him. And he summons in these suns. I'm turning that off. These are, these are his orbs, basically. And you can't damage him by any normal means. He's completely invulnerable. Uh, you have to destroy these things, and they have a thousand HP. And uh, every single time you destroy one of these, it'll take out 12,500 HP. So you have to destroy all four to effectively kill Solar. So I guess that's pretty interesting. Oh yeah, and everything is fire, because you're on the sun. And it'll say orb destroyed, and look, he lost HP. And then eventually, another one will spawn, I'm just not sure where. Uh... Up there. And he has a couple of minions of his own, which we might see later, but I'm just gonna try to beat the boss for now. I'm not sure what the timer on the minions are. The timers. Alright, and he's gonna lose a bit more HP. Just a matter of waiting for it, really. Ah! Hmm, that's weird. I don't know why, sometimes it just breaks. Yeah, not sure what happened there. Let's respawn. I'll be killing him with the admin. Alright, so he lost HP. He lost HP. Uh, I think he's about to lose HP. Yep, there you go. And the last one. There we go. I don't know why sometimes it just breaks. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. 
I'm not sure what the timer on the minions are. Of course, you can just kill him with cheats. It is once every two minutes. After two minutes of past, why is that there? He will summon in Diviner. And then after 60 seconds, he will summon in Disintegration. So let's do that. Whee! So Diviner, uh, he, he's stupid. Uh, <laughs> I don't like this minion, it looks dumb. I'm not sure what he does. So wait, maybe we'll see. But he has 500 HP, he's very slow. Pretty easy to kill. Pretty easy for him to kill you too. What? Oh yeah, right. He's always in these tornadoes that forcefully pull me towards them. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to flee, but I can't. Like, uh, look, mom, no hands. Uh, uh oh. And these tornadoes have 30 HP. You gotta kill them. Oh, quick. Uh, uh, uh oh, where is he? Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, that's what that one does. Oh yeah. Save the world. Dead. But yeah, that's uh, that one. I'm sure it won't take you two minutes to kill Solar uh, unless you suck, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about these guys. We, but we got Disintegration up next. He's a portal with 900 HP, and he kills you. And oh yeah, I remember what this one does. This one summons in like fakes of some scapegoats or some PCs. Hello, there you are. Not sure what the timer is on those either. He can summon in fakes of Lights Out, Piece of Face, and Odontophobia. In that order, every 20 seconds. So yeah, this is Fake Lights Out. Ow. And I'm pretty sure all of the fakes that this integration spawns are, like, regular chasers. I just think they have, like, varying speeds. Yeah, like, Pizza Face is gonna be faster than, uh, Lights Out. But yeah, once every 20 seconds in that specific order. I'm pretty sure you can kill this integration before he spawns anything, so you don't have to worry much about him. But let's wait the last 20 seconds. There he is. Oh yeah, I think this one spawns spikes. I'm not sure, though. Oh man, Pizza Face is pretty fast. And all of these do wants to kill you. Doesn't really matter. So, Lights Out, Average Joey that does nothing. Pizza Face, she's just fast. And Odontophobia, I'm pretty sure, is meant to summon in spikes. Oh yeah, and then it just loops again. Not sure why he isn't. Can he hurt you? All of these have 300 HP. Ow! Screw you. Damn. And they all turn to dust, too. Oh yeah, there you go. Not sure what took him so long, but he can summon in these spikes. Uh, can he go away? Get out of here. And the spikes, they, uh, ow. They, yeah, they do damage and they despawn. But yeah, that's all this guy does. Ooh. That, what? Okay. <laughs> oh, not phobia spawned during the death animation. That's kind of funny. And that's Solar. Keeper has no physical appearance and he will not do anything once spawned in by itself, except for a chat message that says something along the lines of, you feel a protective force watching over you. This is expressed in the form of protecting you and stunning all NPCs for the entire duration of the stun sound, about 4 seconds, which has a 25% chance of happening whenever another SNPC hits you. This will also change the skybox to the skybox image for that duration. Every minute that passes, the shield has a 50% chance of spawning in the map, and collecting it will guarantee a protection next time an SNPC hits you. These shields despawn after after 45 seconds, and they will also emit proximity sound. Okay. Keeper, I am not protected. So basically, SMPCs will get stunned by Keeper now. Not sure who's really a good example to use, I guess. Alright, this is a spoiler, but I'm gonna spawn in Gilbert. He's another volume made NPC we have not reviewed yet, but he's really the best for this. Alright. And he's stunned! <laughs> as long as that skybox is over there, he will be stunned, and this only really happens once. And Keeper will also occasionally spawn in some shields. And Keeper can't protect you from pretty much any NPC. And these shields, oh yeah, I redesigned them. They didn't used to look like this. They will give you god mode when you, like, step over them for 10 seconds and they you won't die. <coughs> oh, I think the 10 seconds ran out. But you saw he didn't really kill me for a second there. And that's all that Keeper does. So now we got Solus. He will teleport in random places relatively, relatively near you, rarely, and it is stationary. Much like Drowner, it will drain your health if it can see you, making the screen fog you in gray and playing its global noise. This will all instantly cut out and go back to normal if you go back out of sight. Portals will also open rarely near you and play its open sound, and it will pull you in once in sight and teleport you in front of Solus. If a portal has successfully done this, it will play its closed sound and disappear. So Solus here, uh, he's stationary, but he teleports sometimes, and he summons in these portals that pull you in. So that's cool. Okay, and when you're close that happens, you will start taking damage. These portals do have open sounds, but I'm too far away from them. I might change that in volume 10. Whoa. Whoa. But, uh, yeah. And a mechanic not listed on the page. Um, if you survive for two minutes, then an entity known as Unstable will spawn. But we will be checking him out later. 
Why? Because he crashes your game. Snix rematch. Omniscient only flies. Has many forms that he can turn into at any time, which lasts for one minute. Can summon eight different NPCs, which he spawns every five seconds, only after rescuing all five toppins. And it is those. The way to beat him is beat his game. There will be five cages scattered around, which you must destroy them all and save the toppins. After collecting all the toppins, an exit will appear, which you must rush to before Snick gets you, who's now even faster. After all toppins are collected, he will stop transforming and it will spawn all three of his other forms, plus two unique NPCs as many as they don't go away until Snick is beaten. Normal speed is 250. I got the hiccups now. So this is basically a remade Snick.exe, and I like this NPC a lot. Oh, God damn it! I got the rare chance. Are you kidding me? This is one in a hundred! Yeah, so we're not listed in the change notes. Uh, whenever you summon in snick.exe, uh, actually, Snick's rematch, there's a one in a hundred chance that an entity known as Mal-X will spawn instead. God, my. Alright, for real this time. So basically, he places purple fog on the map, and uh, you gotta save those toppings. So I'm gonna be turning that music off. And, uh, he, he's pretty cool. It's him. I'm gonna fly away from you, haha. <laughs> and you gotta kill five of these thousand HP toppings. And, uh, you win. They basically collect NPC for the most part. I might actually reduce the opacity on this fog, it's a bit much. I'm actually do that right now. Uh, that is slightly better. Oops, pressed K by accident. And, uh, he will, like, morph and switch forms every now and then. I think it's every 20 seconds, but I'm not entirely sure. Let's collect, uh, four of the toppings. That's my third, and that is my fourth. Now let's wait for him to change forms, because I want to showcase that. Never mind, it's every 150 seconds. But I'm just gonna be summoning, summoning them in separately. We have snack.eyx. Ooh, what does he do again? Oh yeah, he summons in these webs and he hurts a lot and ow, 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 ow. So that one's a bit hectic. And then there's snuck.mp4. So this one basically, uh, he kind of teleports around and shit. Ugh. And then he will eventually like charge into you. I don't know if you guys caught that. Hey, buddy. And then there's snack avi. And this guy basically jumps around and he shits out 50 billion rockets. Oh, I'm gonna reduce the spawn rate on those. But yeah, now let's actually beat Snick's rematch. Oh yeah, and it also has a rare chance to play the classic Snick music. So that's fun. Four and top and five. Here we go. And there's a lag a bit. But it'll summon in a lot of stuff. Oh my goodness. Including a bunch of unique minions. Wait, 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 it'll stop lagging. But yeah, it sucks, Jesus. And you basically gotta shoot that exit to win. While avoiding God only really knows what this is. Kill the fire. Stop it! Stop this madness! Show that again. Maybe it won't lag as much if I shoot the fucking exit faster. Last one. Okay, where's the exit? And it plays custom music too. And there's envy in the chat, because that's the thing that happens. Oh, why is delirium there? I don't remember delirium being a part of this. Yeah, I forget this. But if you shoot the exit, everything is gonna despawn and he basically wins next rematch. Dogma. First the TV appears. It stays stationary for 10 seconds and then Dogma spawns in screaming. Dogma's invisible, so you gotta kill the TV in order to weaken him. And uh, he has three attacks. Three static projectiles that explode on contact, two combines, and a green static ball that heals him. And he has a phase two after he destroyed the TV and uh, it just shoots rockets. That's fun. Alright, so Dogma. And this boss is honestly kind of fun. So those are actually three balls that are just coalescing into one. I'm gonna turn that off. Nice. And a uh, dog in here, if I can find him. There's the combines, too. Uh-oh. Where are y'all's weapons? Gotta fix that in volume 10. Haha, <laughs> oops. Oh, that's a free ball. Uh, that thing will immediately heal the television if it happens. Is that bitch? And Dogma doesn't do much, he kind of just chases you around, and he kills you on contact, I'm pretty sure. Okay, kill it, kill it, okay. But you gotta kill that TV to finish him off. And then, he will turn into that thing! And all the combines will die. And Dogma 2 here, uh, doesn't do much, just summons in these weird rocket things. That also blow you up. And you know what, I feel like Dogma 2 looks really cool, honestly. It's probably the most convincing 2.5D NPC in Scapegrace, which is kind of why I like the suggestion so much. It looks very good. Dead. That's all Dogma has to offer. Oh, Pulsar. This one's pretty popular in the Scapegrace community. When you spawn him in at first, it looks like he won't do anything, but you are wrong. He moves in increments. Every two seconds, he will pulse and then move at a fast dashing pace in the direction he's focusing on you. And if you get rid of 500 of his HP, then he will do one of six random events. Ooh. Yeah, this NPC, I don't know if you guys are in the loop, but this one is uh, very popular. And I don't like it all that much, but a lot of people seem to like it quite a lot. So Pulsar is a tainted path suggestion. 
So he kind of just sits there like an idiot, but then he pulses towards you. Whoa. And it's fun, I guess. <laughs> and he is meant to kill you. He also has, like, death messages. I don't care. I'm going to just showcase that. Well, now. And if you uh, wait for too long, then he's going to do an event. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> he just set me on fire. Idiot. You don't really have to deplete his HP. He will just start another event whenever you want to. Whenever he wants to, actually. I think he tried to poison me, but uh, <laughs> I was too far away, so it didn't trigger. Idiot. Goodbye, pissar. And then to end off this banger volume, we have Gilbert's and an Obatechi suggestion. Here we go. So he's extremely intelligent. That is his gimmick. He doesn't have any special mechanics. No complete and utter bullshit. He is a strictly no bullshit NPC. <laughs> As you can see, I'm running low on disk space, but that's all Gilbert does. He's very creepy, and uh, <laughs> he's a very smart NPC that adapts to environments. He's the smartest AI I think I've ever made for Gmod. No. <laughs> Die. And you know what? I like this one a lot. I think Gilbert can uh, turn out great. He's like one of the highlights of this volume. Nah, I'm gonna- uh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say I'm gonna blow myself up first, but... I think he beat me to it. But yeah, there you go! I'm running out of disk space, but that was volume 8. Goodbye.